Hi, I'm George and welcome to the Cellar Door New Zealand. I've just arrived at Wither Hills in Marlborough and already I'm impressed by this beautiful building. I'm heading inside where head winemaker Matt is going to show me around. Let's go. I'm still in Marlborough and today I'm visiting Wither Hills. Its iconic cellar door building and delicious wines have made it a key stop on the Marlborough Wine Trail. First things first, head winemaker Matt is going to show me around this iconic building. This is the cellar door, so um, combined with the restaurants, we have an on-site restaurant here, uh, open seven days a week uh, for lunches. Mm -hmm. We match the wines with the food, so we have a very strong premise on, on the wine being the focus here mm -hmm. at Wither Hills, and so I work very closely with the chef to make sure that we get a really good complement of, of food and wine. So, so it's like a fun job? Yeah, it's a great job, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This building is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, built in 2005, mm -hmm. um, so won a couple of architectural awards uh, and also won a building award, so oh, um, yeah, it's a really honour to sort of work in a place like this and show people around. So that's yeah. great. This is the main that's tasting area. Yeah, so we have the opportunity here to taste um, our core range of wines as well as uh, single vineyard wines and also um, a range of wines that's not um, readily available to the public called our um, cellar collection wines. So, oh. so there are a, wine, a range of wines, very small parcel, um, boutique in style and quite often us trying new things. So whether it's some trial work that we've been doing in the winery or whether it's new uh, varieties or uh, that sort of thing. So oh. experimentation type wines. So Because you've got quite a few sort of different vineyards to Yeah we do, from. yeah. We have quite a few vineyards across the valley so the company owns uh, 10 or 12 different vineyards and then we source from growers as well so it's a really good mixture so mm. one of the key vineyards which we'll go out to later on this afternoon um, mm. is our Raringi vineyard and mm. uh, that's where we predominantly source our Sauvignon Blanc but it also has Chardonnay and Pinot Noir and then our main Pinot Noir vineyard up behind the winery here is Taylor River um, and that's where we source uh, the single vineyard Taylor River and also our high-end Pinot the Honourable. Marlborough is quite a diverse region mm -hmm. um, in, its, in its geography and its climate and I think that lends itself very well to, to Sauvignon Blanc, um, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Pinot Gris, Pinot Gris which is sort of the main mm. uh, wines that we do here at Wither Not Hills. just Sauvignon Blanc. Not just Sauvignon Blanc, no. no, no. <laughs> You've got in here, this is where you have your restaurant, so this is where your food yeah, wine Yeah, this is where the food happens. wine pairing happens, yeah. Do these um, all open up? Yeah, so everything opens up. Oh, so okay. summertime, all the doors open right up. Um, yeah, it's really oh, cool. Yeah, okay. they're all Lovely. indoor, outdoor flow. So, Should we go um, up and have a look? Yeah, let's have a look yeah. at the turret. Cool, so we'll go up this way and have a look at uh, some of the other areas mm -hmm. in the building. So you said this building was built in 2005? In 2005, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And you've been here since, uh, 2000... since 2010. 10 yeah. years. Yep, yep, so it's coming up 10 years. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yeah, thank you. So we've got into this area here. Wow. So this is the terrace. A good view. Yeah, it's a pretty cool view, isn't it? Yeah. This is kind of the middle level view. So um, the terrace is used for, we do we have weddings up here, um, cocktail parties, you know, sort of quite a, it's quite a really cool spot in the evenings. Mm. Um, the evenings when the wind drops down. It feels kind this of sheltered. A, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And those are the Wither Hills? Yeah, so through the, yep, through the slats there, that mm. actual Wither Hills. So the mm. name of the company came from uh, from those hills. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And that little triangle motif. Yeah, you see that around a little bit. So um, in different parts of the building, the little triangle motif is designed to be replicating the hills. And, oh, cool. Yeah, so, and it gets better. It gets better, yeah, yeah, another level to go yet. So let's go. Yeah, let's go that way. So this is a really good chance to look out over the, the whole valley, the Wairau Valley part of Marlborough. So um, Marlborough split into two main regions, um, the Wairau Valley, which is what we're in, and then the Awateri Valley, which is across the other side there. So, And you can see um, both from here? You can see across to where the Awateri Valley is, yeah. Mm. yeah. 
Yep, so. So this is uh, this is Marlborough, and this is the Wire Valley. Amazing. So it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool view. Yeah. Yep, so. And you've got like a little line of vines. Out yeah. The front. So yep. So out the front, uh, what we call our library block. Mm -hmm. So when when the winery was or the cellar door part of the winery was built uh, in 2005, they planted one row of every commercially available vine at the time. Oh, cool. So it's uh, really cool to see. You know, we've got the likes of Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, etc. But also there's uh, all sorts of varieties. Um, you know, from Pinotage to Brydecker to, you know, Petit Verdot, you name it, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of there. So it's quite cool to see what grows well in Marlborough and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So one of our, our main vineyards is the Rarangi Vineyard, which is um, out near the coast. a really special site for us. And, um, we might we'll, pop out there. We might pop out later on and do a tasting, I think. It's, it's oh, a good place to taste good. a bit of wine, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and you've got the barrel hall. Yeah, so right down the bottom of the winery is, is the barrel hall. So uh, very much uh, designed around the whole cave sort of thing. So it's really important for maturing uh, wine and barrel to have a constant temperature. Yeah. Really cool site. Shall we go yeah. down there? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go there. Let's go caving. Sure. <laughs> So the brand established in 94, 1994, um, established by a local family, started making the wine and grapes that were sourced in Marlborough, but the wine was being made in Auckland, and then in the early 2000s um, came down here and purchased the winery and the building um, that surrounds us. Were the vines here already? Uh, there were some vines here, but it was mostly actually apple orchards. Oh, so really? they pulled out the apples, put in grapes, yeah, sort of expanded the winery from there. In 2005, opened a cellar door and a restaurant in this lovely barrel hall we're in. Yeah, this is yeah. amazing. Yeah. But it's not underground? No, no, so we're actually at ground level. So it was designed to have that kind of underground feel and for the maturation of the wine, you know, that ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. um, so middle of winter, it's around sort of 13, 14 degrees. Middle of summer, it's around 14 or 15 degrees. So mm -hmm. it doesn't change very much. Much, which is perfect yeah, for, you need for that. wine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it looks like the inside of a It barrel. does, yes. Yep. So a lot of lot of thought went into designing the whole building. So from from being inside a barrel to various parts of the building, <laughs> um, where um, you know, there, there are very little intricate bits that make you feel part of the, the area that we're in. Like um, the little triangles. Yeah, the little triangles. Yeah. So they right throughout the building uh, represent the Wither Hills, mm. um, the colour scheme. So the oak upstairs um, was to sort of bring in the barrel oak that we use, but also. Um, you know, the, the colour of the Wither Hills at this time of year in the middle of summer, they are quite brown and, and have a lot of long sort of grass on the, that waves in the wind. And so um, the tussocks out the front are meant to represent that. So when you, when you walk up the, up the building, you have the tussocks which are around the Wither Hills and then you have the turret which is kind of like the pinnacle or the peak. Yeah. You can look out across the vineyards and get a real gauge for the diversity that I think Marlborough have, mm -hmm. has. Um, I think and that, it's quite striking as well. You yeah, it is very striking. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're very close to town, and so we're, we're one of the key stops on, on any of the wine tours in Marlborough. Mm. Uh, nice short taxi ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst filming the Salador New Zealand in the Marlborough wine region, our crew chose to stay at the beautiful Vintners Retreat. Located in sunny Renwick amongst the vines in the beautiful region of Marlborough, the top of the South Island, Vintners Retreat has something for everyone. This beautiful accommodation retreat offers spacious, stylish self-contained villas set amongst the vines. Villas are private and peaceful and only a 15 minute drive from Blenheim. To book your stay at Vintners Retreat, head to vintnersretreat.co.nz. Wither Hills have spent the last 15 years working with local council and community groups to establish over 40 hectares of wetland at their Rarangi vineyard. Through constant weeding and planting thousands of trees, they've established these majestic wetlands in what were once beef and sheep grazing pastures. Matt's going to show me around and explain why the soil here is so unique. So this is um, one of the natural wetlands that are, that are amongst the vineyards. A little, um, yeah, a little fantail <laughs> flying around. So a lot more native birds and, and, and um, insects and, and um, other things have come back in since we've done a lot of the work in here. Mm -hmm. So when we first came in, um, this was uh, sheep and beef on there. Oh, this is so pretty. Yeah. Oh, this is where we host a few guests whenever we get a chance. We have, oh, cool. um, you'll see here a little tasting hut. Um, and then you can sort of see how the integration of the vineyard um, and the wetland works. So effectively, you know, we've got a, a row there with only, what's it got, 10 plants in it. And oh, that was yeah. because that was just how it works around the wetland. So yeah, really cool site and obviously, you know, a great place to bring guests and, and uh, show, show, showcase Sauvignon Blanc. Come through and yeah. then... Yep, yep. 
and then uh, yeah, a little pizza oven. So we'll quite often bring a chef out here and okay. cook up some gourmet pizzas. And, nice. Um, there's an area over here that I'll, I'll show you. It's just almost like a beach. It's literally a very sandy beach. And but so, it's further away from the beach. Yeah, so I've got to remember that this thousands of years ago, there was the water was here. Right. And so what's happened is as the water's washed all the gravels on and the beach has slowly moved back, it's left its deposits behind. And so oh, whether, whether, whether it's to do with an earthquake movement or um, more sediment, big storms, etc., there's lots of different movements. So mm -hmm. over time the country's grown mm -hmm. um, and left these sort of natural wet areas behind. Mm -hmm. You can see it at the end here, you know, it's just sand. Really fine. You know, compared to the gravel we were in before. Yeah. Um, if you look over here, you can see where the rabbits have been digging it up. I know. Digging holes, but you know, it's um, you've got quite a contrast, you know, so you just go down and it's just like your kid's sandpit. And so what that does is it, um, it provides different nutrients and different growing conditions for the vines. So the Sauvignon Blanc that we get, uh, this is Block Sauvignon Blanc, the, the, the flavours that we get out of this one are quite different to the flavours we get out of the, um, the one with the pea gravels in it. Mm. And right throughout the vineyard, uh, there are various pockets of sand, pea gravel, heavy topsoil, etc. But one of the downsides of being quite close to all the lovely birds is that they like fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so what we, we have big over row nets on these smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll do is we'll come in here when, it, when the uh, vines go through a stage called veraison, which is where they soften mm -hmm. and start to accumulate sugar. We will um, give them one final trim and a mow of the grass, and then we'll put a big over row net that goes over between four and six rows. Wow. Reasonably good looking crop in here. Mm. They're still very hard. Two weeks time, they will soften up and go translucent, mm -hmm. and then um, about a couple of weeks after that, we can start tasting them and making decisions on what the flavour profile is going to be mm -hmm. and um, when it's when time to pick. To pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is you know, which in my opinion is the the most important time in mm -hmm. the whole of wine making. Mm -hmm. And if you get that right, then um, half of the work's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wither Hills offers a unique guided blending experience in its barrel hall, which I will of course be having a go at. So Matt, Patty and Andy, hello, hello. hello. Uh, you guys are two of the winemakers here, the assistant winemakers. And so this is something that people can do generally? Yeah, it is, yeah, yep. so people can pay at the cellar door to come down and have this experience. It's mm -hmm. one of uh, three or four different options they can do and um, yeah, get a chance to see what they like and um, put their own blend together. Oh great. Yeah. So if my blend's good enough, I could be replacing Andy. Yeah, could be. Yeah, great. We'll, 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 we'll just check at the yeah, end. Yeah, don't worry too much. Uh, I think you'll be right. Yeah. So we're going to look at a, a blending session of three of our key components that we that we have each year. So we've got our Taylor River Pinot Noir, which is off the back of the um, vineyard here. Mm -hmm. And we've got Ben Morvan, which is about five minutes down the road. Um, and then we've got another component which comes from both those, those vineyards, which is our barrel ferment component. The difference being that it's fermented partially in barrel, mm -hmm. which is not, not typical across all, all Pinot Noir. The, the hope is that what we like to show is that there is difference in various parts of the valley. And mm -hmm. so, um, that's a, so the blending works, it's, a, it's kind of, as the name suggests, it's putting stuff together. So we spend a lot of time in the winery um, looking at different components of the wine, mm -hmm. um, trying to work out what we like, what we don't like, um, different flavours. It's, it's about consistency of style. Mm. Um, and so one component might be big and rich and really sort of, you know, fast floor and, and luscious, and another component might be quite fruity. Mm -hmm. um, and if you put the two of those together, you end up with a bit of both of them. Mm. So the blending part of it, uh, which we do across all of the varieties, um, is really key. I think it's probably, you know, behind the picking decision, the second most important decision that we make as winemakers in the whole. And you blend it, and then you just have to wait, right? Yeah. And see what, <laughs> yeah. see what you've done. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Should I be smelling and then tasting yeah, as yeah. I go? Yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'll pop Ben Morvan back. This one certainly doesn't jump out of the glass the same way that the, the Taylor River did. Oak coming through on the, yeah. on the barrel for yeah. And one behind. So that, that really showcases what a barrel can do. It's kind of like... Mm. That on its own, uh, in our opinion, is way too much to have a wine like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of, it's, the idea is to exaggerate what um, uh, the oak does, and so 
what tends to happen is when we bring the wine together is we're using a smaller percentage of that mm -hmm. um, to give that kind of a little bit of a, a, a charred lift. And when it comes to Sauvignon Blanc, for example, um, you know, when we go to blend, we'll have over a hundred different components that we put together to make up um, you know, the, the blends that we do. It's not only uh, the different type of cooperage, it's also different type of forest, different type of toast, mm -hmm. different shape, different the type, age type of the age barrel. of the barrel, mm. exactly. Out of those wines, mm. what was your favourite one? I really liked the barrel ferment. <laughs> a lot of people do. I know. I cool. like, yeah. Yep, like so you like the, big. the, the bigness still? Yeah. And, okay, so. This is um, South Australian influence. <laughs> cool. And then, and then what we do is we start to talk about those exact things. What do we like? What's the style that we're looking for? So, mm -hmm. you know, we're pretty simple people and um, percentages equals mills. So, Great. if we like 50%, I can work with that. then um, we'll work with that. Okay. Uh, so, it's like going back to school. So, we put this in here until we get to pretty much smack on 50%, the mm -hmm. other side, 10% of this one. Okay. So. Gosh, um, I'm freaking out about this. You guys <laughs> must so. just be sweating all the time. Still got that, that barrel influence, but it's mm. not quite as powerful as it was in that in that, um, still a lot though. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Let's try 25%. Let's halve it. When we're getting to mm. the Sauvignon Blanc and over 100 components mm. and we're up to blend 33, yeah. so 33 times we've done this, yeah. um, we're talking about very small, you know, half a percent. What is half a percent? Oh wow. Okay. And, and they, make, they make big differences when you're getting there. And that's about the, that's the artisan side of Yeah, that's so trying precise. Trying to decide um, mm. where we end up. Okay, so what happens now? Do we... Let's halve the, the, the oak, mm -hmm. oaky component. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's That's taste number the... number two. I mean, it smells really good. Like, I got a lot more fragrance earlier on. Yeah, mm. so what we did, uh, what I did there was tone down the oaky mm -hmm. component and bump up the... Um, so this more Taylor, Taylor River. Mm. Yeah, so it's 50% Taylor River uh, and 25% been more than 25% barrel ferment. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, I'm getting a lot more spice mm -hmm. out of it, and and the oak is still there. It's but really it's not, nice. It's not overpowering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I guess you know what you're doing. Well, the perfect compliment that someone gives you about a wine is that tastes really good. <laughs> yeah. right? Not, oh, that's nice. It's got a nice oaky character to it. Because to me, that's kind of, oh, okay, they're picking up on the oak. Maybe that's a bit too much. So sure. So you actually, want that really fully really integrated. Really integrated, perfect balance of. Mm -hmm whether it's Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay, Riesling, Pinot Noir, um, the wine isn't just the wine. Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot of thought that goes into it mm. and also there's a lot of stylistic differences. And so, It's almost know, like it's really hard <laughs> and you can't just roll up and make a delicious yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. glad you guys know what you're doing. Yeah. It's a good challenge. Yeah, yeah and much. I've enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you. Sure. No worries. <laughs>Marlborough is very well known for Sauvignon Blanc, yeah. uh, as, as, you, as, as everyone knows, um, and, and I guess one of the things that we'd like ourselves in the future to be more known for is other varieties. So Marlborough makes amazing Pinot, um, you know, really fruit-driven Chardonnays, um, quite rich, voluptuous, um, but also have a slight acidness to them, Pinot Gris, so, you know, um, I think that Marlborough's got it all there, uh, it's just a case of us getting it out into the, into the marketplace more. Is there a variety in particular that you are drawn to, aside from um, Sauvignon? Yes, yeah, so obviously, obviously Sauvignon Blanc is a big part of what we do. But I guess for me, and probably like actually most, a lot of, lot of Marlborough winemakers, Riesling. So mm -hmm. we grow a, a small amount of Riesling. For me, the taste of Riesling, the ageability of the wine is mm -hmm. something. Um, you know, I, I had a, a group of Americans here last week and we tasted some 2011 Riesling from a couple of single vineyards. And they were really just blown away by, by the, the, the weight and the power of the wine. Uh, and the fact that we actually made reason to start with. So I think that's probably one of the key messages is that there, there are other varieties out there that Marlborough does, mm -hmm. and certainly Wither Hills is right up there with, with looking at all of those. 
Uh, all the wines that we make are accredited sustainable through the New Zealand wine growing accreditation. Mm -hmm. So the winery itself and also all our vineyards that we grow uh, and also the fruit that we source through some of our contract growers. So We've got um, some organic vineyards that we've been looking at using, uh, you know, using organics for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the principles that we're using in our organic vineyards we've actually converted over to use in our conventional vineyards. So into row species planting, um, water monitoring, you know, all, all those sorts of things that are, that are heading towards you know, sustainable wine growing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one of your future focuses? It is very much, yeah, how we can look to expand that. Obviously we realise that um, wine growing has a, has a big impact on the environment through the water that we use and the energy that we use. Um, so we've always got water reduction targets. Um, we've been done, done a big push in recycling in the last uh, probably five years around uh, packaging, recycling, um, even right down to you know in the, in the winery lunchroom, all of the the um, green waste is all gone goes to compost. Okay. All the bottles, milk bottles, etc. You know, just even small things go a long way. Yeah. As well as in the vineyard, we're re looking to reuse posts, reuse all our spray containers, nets, etc. So yeah, so big big push in that right area. Right down to the little yeah, details. right down to the little detail. Yeah. You obviously are looking to the future. There's a lot going on with the hills. You're not just in New Zealand, are you? No, no, no. So since 94 when we first started, um, the UK was our first export market and we've sort of been growing ever since. So a big part of the brand story is that growth internationally. So we're now um, across a lot of countries in the world, you know, we're gaining good momentum in, the, in America, um, in, sort of very strong in the UK. Uh, it's sort of a tradition, uh, and also in Australia. My home turf. Your home turf, Australia, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we've made some, some good progress in Australia in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. um, and it's just continuing to grow. So, we're in the single vineyard. Yeah, in the Raringa right. vineyard. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, I thought what we do here is um, taste Sauvignon Blanc. Um, a couple, couple of wines to taste here, so I thought we'd taste um, our core range wine, which is our Wara Valley with a Hill Sauvignon Blanc, um, and then go into the single vineyard, which is actually from, some of it's from this particular right, vineyard yeah. here. So That's yeah. great. About 30% of the Raringi vineyard ends up in, in this particular wine. Um, Raringi is a very key site for us and, and has some really cool flavours that, that we want to see right throughout the wine. So, um, so, yeah, so, so this, this wine's a combination of vineyards from right throughout the Wairau Valley, and I guess it's our take on what we see as a really solid Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, so nice classical flavours mm -hmm. and aromas. Um, you know, it's got that really nice sort of cut grass, herbaceous character right the way through to some nice sort of tropical and the stone fruit, fruit and passion fruit mm -hmm. on the end, uh, a bit of guava. And just that really rich palate. One of the things mm -hmm. that um, one of the things that we try really hard on is the palate, because um, for us the palate's sort of the lasting sense. Mm. Um, and so if you can get real weight and real texture, it draws you back for another glass. So um, yeah, it's quite structured. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah, again, that balance thing I think I talked about earlier. Um, it's around getting the balance right between mm. the alcohol, the sugar, the acid, mm -hmm. the weight, the fruit characteristics. You know. And you do that by sort of. Tasting all the well, different We do it through, through the blending. blending yeah, mm. we'll have we have blocks that are slightly more tropical, mm -hmm. um, blocks that tend to show some really nice herbaceous characters. When we put those together, mm. um, it tends to give us a bit of both. Not mm. not always. Sometimes it's a, a little bit interesting when you put two together and they don't quite look how you mm -hmm. thought they would do. But I guess that's where experience comes in a little bit. So, what kind of differences in flavour? Yeah. So I guess um, the when you when we move to the the Raringi single vineyard, uh, it's really showcasing the site. So it's about um, what tends to happen out here. A little bit cooler sometimes, so we get a bit more um, acidity. So we talk about um, the wine having a really good fine line or a defined line that's around the acid on the palate uh, and the weight coming from the extra age. So the Raringi is traditionally one to two years solid behind um, yeah, the so cool range. It's a sixteen that mm. we're tasting at the moment. Um, and what that does is it gives it weight. Um, there's very little sugar in this wine, so we ferment this wine completely dry, and we find that really gives that linearity, gives us sort of nice uh, whetstone, sea salt character, mm. um, some nice mineral notes, and that combined with a real dryness, um, with a bit of age, gives it weight. Quite often, I'll, I'll do tastings with um, with people, and we'll show both of these in two separate glasses, and you know, what's your favourite? And you know, it's a 50-50. If I got 20 people in the room usually 50-50 split for exactly the reasons why we think they're different. So, Should we yeah. see? Uh... Yeah. And yeah, you can be, see which side of the fence you sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the side of the fence? Um, I prefer the Rari side of the fence. Um, I, I 
Interesting enough, although a lot of New Zealand wine is very much made to be drunk quite fresh, um, I quite like older wines, and so um, a bit more texture and a bit more. Is this barrel around. aged? No, no, no. So no, no barrel. So where does that kind of? It comes from the um, the vineyard and the way that it ages. So it's the development that's in it. Um, right. But it's not developed in kind of a, a typical canned pea or asparagus type character. Mm. It's actually a really rich integral development. Um, so to me, there's you know, it brings in all. It's still got that that um, still that herbaceous lemon citrus note that's through it. But there's sort of something but added to it. Yeah. yeah. And again, that real power and palate on the weight, and still, even mm. though it's you know a couple of years old, it's fresh, it's vibrant, um, but it has weight. Still got that like fruit. Yeah. It's got, yep. Is it almost pineapple. Yeah, there? a little. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. Maybe, yep. Yeah. Yep. Where, where, are the, where are the mussels? <laughs> where are the scallops? <laughs> you know, uh, lends, both of the wines lend themselves very well to seafood, mm. um, as as most Sauvignon Blancs do. It does um, have that almost salty nose. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, salty, briny kind mm. of mineral mm. type nose. Yeah. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's cool. What a spot. Yeah, it's a pretty cool spot, isn't it? Great place to have a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'm on this side of the fence. Yeah. It's pretty good. Well, I have had such a fabulous time here at Wither Hills. I've got myself kitted out in some cold climate appropriate attire. Matt and I have this delicious feast to try. Uh, I'm going to try one of the early light sav blocks. We might even let the crew join us. Maybe. Thanks for having me. No worries. Cheers. Cheers.